So I realized I've now created and published over a hundred Notion templates, which means I'm probably insane. But I thought I would share with you seven of the best tips that have served me well along the way. So if you are recreating or redesigning your own Notion workspace, or if you're a Notion template creator, I hope you find these useful. And I'm just gonna show you in Notion exactly how I go about creating cleaner Notion setups. Enjoy. Tip number one, the call out block frame, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is something I started doing uh, with my first template system called Content OS, which is now a year ago. And it seems to be quite a popular kind of uh, design element. So I'm going to show you, I get asked all the time, how do you do this? And it's so simple. People think that it's some trickery or some magic, but it's really so simple. So what I'm talking about is you see how there's this kind of frame around the edge of this database and this menu and this calendar. So I'm going to show you how you can create these call out frames. So let's just start a new line and it is as simple as typing and searching for a call out block. You'll automatically be given an icon and a space to type your heading. So let's just say, that we did want to do you know, meetings as the, uh, the title of this block. We can add and drag anything we want into it. And then the trick for getting that kind of frame or divider around the block is just setting the color to default background. And that's it. And we can put whatever we want in here. We can make a little div line. We can link it to a database or we can create a linked database. So let's say, I'm just going to search for meetings database in here. <laughs> I probably have too many, but here we go. We now have a meetings uh, calendar inside of one of these call out frames. And these are quite useful for kind of creating a clear uh, distinction across your dashboard. And if you just like that aesthetic, uh, setting the, the background color to default is how you get that neat little gray outline. Tip number two is our friend, the div line, which I think is one of the most underrated and underused Notion blocks. And I'm just giving an example of this project proposal uh, template, which uses div lines uh, kind of to just separate and break up the page in a way that makes things much, much easier to digest and read. So the I mean, creating a div block, uh, a div line, hopefully isn't uh, going to be difficult. So you can either search for it. Is it even called a div line? I don't even know. <laughs> no, use the shortcut divider. It's called a divider. So I'm just been calling it a div line and it's not even that. So you can search for a divider like that. But the reason I don't know what it's called is because I just used the shortcut, which is three of these hyphens in a row and you can quickly create div lines. So what's it good for? Typically it's great for things like if you have a heading and you want to, you know, this is the title, give it a little bit of a, a gap beneath that. And then you can do things like format it with a quote and some other text. And then if you're done with your paragraph and you want to start something new, you can also just create a div line quickly like this. I also use it in menus. So if I want to break up this menu and kind of create a new section, it's a really neat, clean, subtle way of just creating some separation in your menus and in your dashboards. Uh, divider, highly recommended for breaking up your workspaces and dashboards. Okay, tip number dry, we are going to be making use of Notion's color column. So this is a more recent updates, and I think it's just a nice way to add some more clarity and some color to your boards. So this is, example is a sales pipeline. We can see the status of our contacts in the pipeline, uh, moving from left to right, and each column has a color. So how can you do this for yourself? First of all, you just need to make sure that it is a board layout, so that's this. And then you're going to choose the group, uh, the factor that you want to group the board by. So that is within edit view and then group. You can choose to group by whatever you like. So I'm going to choose status. And by default, you'll see that it doesn't give us 
the uh, the pretty color. So what we need to do is just hit this toggle, color columns. We can also hide empty groups if we want to. We're going to talk about that in another tip. And from this view, we can also head back, hit properties. And so we're, we're using the status property. So if I wanted to adjust the colors of this uh, particular status, I can do so within this properties view. So this is just a nice and quick way to add like some quick color to your dashboard. Okay, tip number four I use all the time. So I I don't know if I have a problem or something, but grouping is like one of the one of the main things that I end up doing in Notion setups and boards. So for a board, you can subgroup and that's how you get these little toggles. So these are what I'm talking about when I'm saying grouping and subgrouping. And it's a really nice way to clear up space and kind of filter the information that you want to see on a board. Uh, and it'll also obviously it organizes things based on the factor that you choose. So for example, this is a tasks board or I call them actions. And what we have here is we have our task grouped or subgrouped by project, which is quite nice. So if this was my medium growth project or a pre-launch campaign, I can see all of the, the tasks that belong to this group. And I can also see the status of those tasks here. So how do we do this? Let's go into edit view. The grouping is what we looked at in the last one, which is status. We said we're going to group things by status, and then we can also subgroup by another property. So below that you'll see subgroup and I can choose from a limited list of, uh, of factors or properties that are actually, you know, subgroupable. I could also subgroup by priority. So this would give me kind of highest priority tasks at the top, uh, or I could subgroup by status again, and then that would be completely pointless. You can also subgroup by dates, or you can subgroup by relational properties, such as projects, uh, contacts, and things like this. Uh, so subgrouping is a really nice way to, to, uh, to kind of filter out information uh, on, your, on your boards, but it also works really nicely for tables like this. So I could kind of quickly hide the tasks within specific projects if I'm not thinking about them right now and also for galleries. So I'm going to use this database again. I'm going to make a gallery view and then I'm going to hide the page content because these are a bit big. Then I can also group this gallery by let's say project. And so now I have another type of view for my tasks, uh, which is grouped by project. So there we go. Subgrouping and grouping. Super handy for uh, making some space and also uh, using Notion's database functionality to sort and order things by a specific factor. Okay, the last two have maybe been a little bit more advanced, you know, we're going into databases, grouping, subgrouping, using relational properties. This one is much more chill. We're just using toggle lists. And now we can also use different hierarchy of toggle headings. So. What does a toggle let you do and why is it a useful thing for your dashboards? Basically, it lets you hide stuff, especially lists. So this is just a kind of regular toggle list. So this could be a checklist item. This could be a brainstorm that you want to have on this page, on this dashboard that you can reference, but you don't want it to take up all of this space, right? So if this got really long, then we lose sight of everything else on the dashboard just because we had so many ideas. So I can quit, if I put all of that inside of a toggle list like this, I can quickly hide it and then I could open up, for example, you can also put a database of items inside of a toggle and you can also do things like embeds and other uh, kind of third party and interactive things. So this is a Google Analytics embed if it loads and you can see this takes up basically the whole page, which is nice to have because uh, if you want to quickly kind of reference your analytics or something else, that, uh, other data that you're pulling in, it's nice to have it here. But imagine if we had all of these open at the same time, it would be quite a lot of scrolling and uh, nobody wants that. So toggle lists, super helpful for making your dashboards uh, more compressed and concise while not sacrificing all the information that you want to keep on a specific page. 
So for tip six, I'm actually going to stack what we just learned in tip five, and I'm going to use toggle lists. So we're talking about images and GIFs. GIFs, I'm going to do a shout out to Notion Bar because uh, she is kind of all over making super aesthetic and vibey dashboards. So if you want to learn more about that, I would highly recommend checking out Notion Bar. And she got me onto the idea of using GIFs inside of dashboards. GIFs are great, but images in general, a couple of ways I want to talk about using images in your Notion dashboards. First thing, cover page, cover page image. You can change the cover. Or you can upload uh, specific images from your own computer, or you can just use this handy Unsplash link. So you can search for, um, I don't know. Let's see what happens if I search for Notion. Hey, there you go. Cover page images, you can do so by changing cover. I'm gonna remove this and just show you quickly if you're not sure how to create a cover in the first place, you're gonna to have to look towards the, uh, the page title, hit add cover, and then you can change cover here, as I was just doing. Another way that you'll maybe wanna use images in your dashboards is in a gallery view and showing the cover image. So this is the cover image for this page, but these items are all pages, right? So Rosie Adams might be an employee of ours and her cover image is what we're displaying in this gallery view. And that just gives us a really nice uh, and clear view of our team. And so how would you do this? First of all, you need to uh, think about this gallery as the, uh, the view that we're editing. So, I need, so if I wanna change this item, if I change the cover, if I change uh, this image here, that's not gonna change what shows in the gallery view. I need to go to this gallery view here and I need to hit edit view. And the thing that we're editing now or focused on now is the showing the cover page as the, uh, the content. So card preview, I can choose page cover or I can choose page content. Or if I have another property, which is an image, that's also gonna show up here. So this is showing the page content. That's a little bit confusing because I actually had the image inside of it, but let's just show what I mean if I remove this image here, you'll see the page content is just gonna be the text inside. Whereas if I edit the view and I show duh, 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 layout card preview page cover, we can see this is what's showing in the card preview. So that's one nice way of using images as well. GIFs I mentioned, you can just drag copy paste GIFs, which are nice for things like videos um, or you know just creating a cool vibe and uh, some fun movement on the page. And another example is within pages. So if you wanted to have a more uh, kind of uh, image based document template, this would be a case study. Maybe at each section you have a large image breaking it up. You can also do things like uh, put images side by side and create little uh, galleries within your documents as well. So that's tip six, images and GIFs. And the final tip is kind of a bit boring maybe, but it's super simple and it's gonna help just clean up uh, the feeling of your, of your dashboard. So first thing we're gonna look at is hiding database titles. This is a nice new feature that Notion added recently. So I see this kind of, I already have a header here. I already, have, I already know what this is. This is kind of a little bit ugly, maybe depends on uh, your preference. I'm gonna hit these three dots and I'm just gonna hit hide database. And if I wanna see that database, so for example, if I wanna check that this is the right database, uh, I can hit this and click show again. I can also edit the title from here if I want to. First thing, we're just gonna hide the database. Another thing you'll notice is that on this, uh, on this timeline view, it says five hidden groups. So if I open that up, there's a lot of empty space. That's why I've hidden them because basically we don't really wanna be taking up space with, uh, with area that's not being used. So one option that you can do for things like groups and within databases, if I hit edit view and I go into group, there's also an option to hide empty groups. So this is the default. It's gonna show all of the information and all of the, uh, the factors as their own subgroup. I can also just hit hide empty groups and you can see that really quickly click tidies up uh, this particular database view. The final piece, just while I am talking about formatting and uh, quick 
wins for your uh, your overall formatting, head up to the top right. This is a bonus tip. Uh, you can use small text or large text. You can use full width or squeezed up width. No, that's not what it's called. You can just the default is going to be to have this narrow view, and you can also create full width pages, which is what I like to do with dashboards. And you can also change the font for your page here. Last, last extra bonus tip, which is something that people probably aren't aware of. If the text is too small for you, you can hold control and you can zoom in and out by hitting plus or minus on your keyboard. So holding control and hitting plus to zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in, everything's gonna get bigger and it's gonna resize for us. So we have nice big text or I can hit minus and it's gonna resize and zoom out for us. So that's a nice handy bonus tip number nine. Okay, so I hope at least a couple of those tips were new to you and that you can implement them right away in your own workspace. If you'd like to use the document referenced in this video, I'll leave a link uh, that you can duplicate the template and just copy paste across anything that you'd like to use. So enjoy and see you in the next video.